I kind of wanted to follow Christ, but I didn't want to give everything to him. And I was dating a girl at the time, and I uh, have a background in music, and I was studying music in college, but I thought that it's not going to make me any money in the future, so I'm just going to give it up, and I'm going to I'm going to go where the money is. And so um, I got sucked in and fished into this Instagram influencer guy. Uh, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to like dog him, but he was just like, I could, you can make you know six figures in a year doing social media marketing online. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, that seems easy. Let me do that. So I started a business, and um, it was a C corporation. I was working with a lawyer. Well, it was supposed to be a C corporation. Um, I was working <laughs> with a lawyer, um, social media marketing. We had clients like on the books. I was meeting with dentist offices, and you know, uh, obviously this lawyer down in Arkansas. And there was this like this company that was like a middleman for marijuana businesses. So like the marijuana companies could like house their money legally with this this compliance company that would say we'll take care of the legal side of all of the money that you're because at the time it was still illegal in most places uh if that makes sense mm-hmm. uh, but anyways yeah. like um i was yeah it was the summer of 2017 and all of a sudden the girl that i thought that i loved like that just gave me all the sexual fulfillment that i had ever wanted and all of the you know, um, I guess all of the fantasies that I thought I had in my mind about who I wanted my spouse to be, mm-hmm. she 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 fulfilled that, and so she was an idol for me big time, and uh, but at the same time I was growing lukewarm, more and more lukewarm in my relationship with Christ as as we were dating, and um, yeah, basically out of nowhere she broke up with me and. Um, then two weeks later, my business partner was like, yeah, I don't think this is working out. And then a month later, the lawyer that I was working with that was processing all my paperwork died. Oh, wow. He had a heart attack in his sleep. Hmm. And so I was left with nothing. And then, um, but it's so crazy. Uh, two, two days before my girlfriend broke up with me, I was offered this like worship leader position at a church. Um, and the pastor didn't even know that I was like saved yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so like, uh, kinda, it's kind of scary, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but he knew that I was a musician and sometimes churches are so desperate for musicians, you know, they just, yeah. But th- this was the guy he, I like served at a, a summer camp and, you know, I still had the whole Christianese language and, you know, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I was manipulative and I could like, I could like talk the talk, you know, I'm saved. I know Christ, but I didn't. And, um, so all I was left with was this little worship leader position and, um, it was July of 2017, and I told God, okay, I'm going to fast for 100 hours. And that'll basically sh- show, show you that I'm, since I'm going to do this for you, I need you to do this for me. I need my business back. I need this girl back that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do this worship leader thing, but I don't think that I want to do it in the long haul. You know, I want money. Mm-hmm. I want to get married. And then on the third day of the fast, uh, I was just wrecked in my living room. And um, yeah, I just told the Lord, Lord, I, truly, I surrender everything to you. I have nothing left. Hmm. And um, to me, I believe it was the Holy Spirit whispered in my, in, in my ear, welcome home. And so I was right there in my living room, nobody else around, no like crazy altar call that I had experienced my whole life. It was unique, and it's, and it's a moment that I'll never forget. Because from that point on, my life started to change and my mindset started to shift. And so... So uh, yeah, it, that's, yeah. that's intriguing to me. What yeah. part do you think the fasting played in that? Man. Because I... It sounded, what, what, what were you... Uh, 48 or 72 hours into a fast? Then? Yeah, about that, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was, but fasting, there's something about it. And I thought it was like... I thought it was a workspace thing, like... For the longest time, mm-hmm. even after my salvation, like I'm showing God that I'm, uh, that I'm like serious about whatever I want. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. now I'm starting to realize that fasting is more. It's more of like a you're literally saying, God, I want you to be my source of life. Rather, I'm taking the source of life away that I have, the food that I have, the mm-hmm. drink that I have, mm-hmm. um, and you're you're my source of life. And every time, every, now every time I like think of food. It leads me to pray, and you know, it leads me to be more aware of prayer. And 
I don't know what it was, man, but yeah, the third day of the fast, I just, it was Tuesday, July 25th, I believe it was, 2017, mm. and um, yeah, that's when I, that's when I got serious about my relationship with Jesus, so. Mm -hmm. Very good, very yeah. good. So wow, how has your life shifted then? How did finding Christ change your life? Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's a good question, yeah. Um, well, literally, it changed everything because um, the direction that I was going, I never thought that I would. I never thought that. Yeah, where I'm at now, if you would have told me that I lead worship and that I'm a missionary, like five years ago right. or six years ago, I would have said you're stupid. And <laughs> because I thought, I thought missionaries were, you know, the super Christians that you know have to beg people for money and they like live in a shack in Africa. And I'm not going to do that. You right. Know? I'm going right. to make money and, you know, I'm going to... Live the American dream. Live the American dream. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to, you know, do what I like to do. Right. And, um, yeah, since then, I started to lead worship. Uh, and that really launched me into my purpose. I started to disciple this little worship band at First Baptist Cleveland. And, um, man, they were my everything for two years. This group of teenagers... Uh, they were so remarkable, and um, that was like what I had to look forward to every week was just leading worship. And on that, you know, that journey of Christ, like uh, this new journey with Christ, it started to tear down walls of false theology that have built been built up for decades in my life, and it's been a slow process. Mm -hmm. But uh, from 2017, I was faithful to this church, 2017, 2018, and then 2019, um, I met a guy who is my boss now uh, in a Chick-fil-A in Cleveland, Tennessee, and that led me to the mission field. But um, I started to read the Bible when I It's always saved. a good thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> I started in the Psalms. It's amazing how many Christians don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually started to read the Bible. And... Um, I started in the Psalms and uh, still had never read the whole Bible my whole life. Never really dove into the Old Testament mm -hmm. uh, because to me, I never understood how it's, it's like a different God to me. I, I have a different belief now, but I read mm -hmm. a book called Gentle and Lowly that changed my perspective on that. But uh, I was like, man, Jesus and the Old Testament God are like... Seemed like you couldn't put the two together. At odds, yeah. And, yeah. Um, but it's just not true. And... Um, so yeah, there's just I began to read the Bible and I start, started to see the narrative of God going to the nations. And I started to really dive into what biblical worship looked like because this was my purpose. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go all in. And I started to look at like what the tabernacle looked like uh, with David. And you know, I started to watch the Bible Project videos because it was really hard. It's really hard. It was really hard for me to read and like stay mm -hmm. engulfed Same in focus. scripture. Yep. So when I saw the pictures with the Bible Project, it really helped me. And I think Tim Mackey's great. I mean, the dude's fluent in Hebrew. So like, um, I think he's a pretty trustworthy source. Um, but yeah, so it just, it changed my whole life.